There is this debate online featuring Dr. Jordan Peterson with a French journalist that's been getting a lot of attention on the internet lately. Um, there might be a few copies of it. I saw one from the channel Voice Liberty that's been, um, has just under a million views now. Let's see kind of how that does. He was debating a French journalist. I don't know the guy's name. They didn't announce it in the uh, version that I saw, but once again, there might be some other things, you know, other, other uploads of this debate. But let's get right into things. How did it go? I mean, I was pulled in by the clickbait title. Jordan Peterson seemed very <laughs> angry in this one, and, um, you could really tell that the uh, French journalist that he was um, talking to was really trying to um, provoke him, you know, trying to get those type of angry responses. But at the same time, you know, in the spirit of interviews, I mean, the guy's openly saying those, like, you need to ask the tough questions. But what Jordan Peterson was saying was it seemed like that the French guy was trying to miscategorize him and trying to put pressure on him to sort of... Well, in short, I mean, in absolute layman's terms, just trying to make him look bad by misrepresenting what he's trying to say. So let's talk about a bit, little bit of the substance material. I would say that, um, I would say the best thing that I thought Jordan Peterson did was um, actually his defense of the makeup. The, like, you know, talking about his comments that he'd made in the past about makeup. He did that interview with Vice and he talked about like one thing that men and women can do would be no makeup in the workplace, no red lipstick, no rouge and powder, just no makeup, period. Because this is one of the things that's most highly brought up when it comes to Jordan Peterson. But, I mean, what he's trying to say is just that um, he was just like, it's a sexual display. It's like, why don't they just ban makeup from the workplace? If it is indeed sending a sexual signal, just ban all makeup. Men don't wear makeup, so women don't have to wear makeup in the workplace. I mean, like... um. Or like if you want to just, if businesses want to institute that rule, then that's what we can do. So really, I think that that one is uh, not as outrageous as people thought about. Once again, I have no idea if any if that would ever happen. In in all reality, it's most likely that a, a rule like that would never happen. But that, that is what I thought Jordan Peterson's best moment was, you know, his response where, his response to the challenges about, you know, his comments on no makeup in the workplace. I thought he defended that position rather well even though it does sound outrageous, you know, to some people. What I thought the French journalist did the best at was um, he talked about Jordan Peterson trying to play off the distress of young men for profit. And those are the kind of tough questions or just the really tough things that need to be asked in Jordan Peterson debates. I mean, you're not going to hear anything like that when he's talking to Sam Harris because, of course, they're so busy trying to discover what is the nature of truth, like belief systems, you know, and even the existence of God and everything, and they have so many other things to discuss. And people like Kathy Newman don't know how to count, so they can't even ask something like that. So it's good to actually hear how someone responds, and I thought that that's got what, that guy's kind of you know approach to this was the best because what a lot of people say about Jordan Peterson is that he is intentionally distorting his work to get a desired result. He is intentionally trying to distort the psychological information to get this kind of reaction from YouTube, which he openly admits is a male domain. That's the allegation. And is that true? You know, I think that there's a certain amount of truth in it. I think it's one of those things that's halfway in, halfway out, where it's like the guys who get famous in the intellectual dark web, they are all about analytics. I mean, Jordan Peterson openly said that he studied the YouTube analytics. He said this in his lectures before many times. He looks at, you know, like who was watching his videos for how long. He can see the male and female stuff. Stefan Molyneux has talked about this stuff in, you know, agonizing detail about the... You know, even the stuff about men are more likely to buy this type of book. Women are more likely to buy this type of book. These guys study analytics, so they do craft their work specifically for, you know, target domains. But that's not rocket science, and that's not abnormal. That's called knowing your audience. But at the same time, though, I mean, they're not just, you know, presenters. They're cl guys like Jordan Peterson are claiming to be, you know, psychologists who are the absolute best in their field. So that's what um, a lot of people are very concerned about when it comes to Jordan Peterson. Overall, I'm a very big fan of him. I think he's a very engaging lecturer. I definitely like the Maps of Meaning stuff much more than the um, gender pay gap things because 
the uh, French journalist brought up the gender pay gap again, and I mean, that's just a dead horse. I mean, that's just like, you know, it's such a useless conversation. I mean, I was just, I found a clip on YouTube of Thomas Sowell back in 1981 having the exact same conversation about the gender pay gap that, you know, you would have heard from somebody like Jordan Peterson and Kathy Newman. Yeah, they got a few different examples, but it's the same stuff that's been going on for decades. People just need to let it go. I mean, we you and I both know that there are reasons for the gender pay gap, the wage gap, the earnings gap, whatever you'd like to call it. This stuff isn't new. This isn't groundbreaking. It's just kind of a reiteration of the old arguments. Larry Elder wrote something very interesting about it years ago called Cracks in the Glass Ceiling. That was the first time I ever heard about it, you know, and it's just like Jordan Peterson said the same thing that, you know, Larry Elder wrote in his book when it was like, um, you know, if you're dealing with two people in their 20s who have, you know, the same qualifications for the same job, women don't get paid less for the exact same work. Okay, boom, end of story. We all know that now. So I think that that's really just type of, I think it's just gonna a vicious cycle. We're going to be hearing about the wage gap, the earnings gap, the gender pay gap for the rest of our lives, but it's not really what people are representing it to be. And I think that it's somewhat debunked, and I would hope that with the internet, people are going to kind of be expanding toward um, some new ways of looking at things. I think hopefully people will just get so tired of hearing about the gender pay gap that maybe they'll start exploring a new idea or something like that. And um, uh, Peterson has talked about those things as well, you know, like when he brought up some of the James Damore stuff, like, and I don't know about having women have it, having more flexible hours when in engineering to attract more women and things like that. But I don't even really know that much about that, so i got to stay away from that stuff. But also, you know, during the debate, like, they're really trying to talk about masculinity. And the, the uh, version that I heard began by kind of asking, what is a true man? And Peterson said a couple of very interesting lines in the debate, like, he's talking about courage. That's a big thing. And another one was, um, how do you resolve conflict? And he said, by negotiating for peace. I was like, wow, you know, it's like, those are some very bold statements, and like, it, those are good things, and really good to hear that, because when you present this, um, the idea that, you know, men can get into physical combat, so men can start fighting, so there's like, they have a bigger urge to be civil, or to watch what they're saying, I mean, I don't really find that that's the most effective way to get the message across, when he's just like, if you have a conflict, the best thing to do is to negotiate for peace much better way to present the idea. It's a very interesting thing to explore that whole concept of, and I hope I'm interpreting this correctly, when it's like you're hearing that when a man is talking with a woman, you know, he's expected not to get physical with her, which he shouldn't, absolutely not. So therefore, there is this type of kind of barrier, which, and excuse me if I'm going to be very, very blunt here, she can go as crazy and ballistic as she wants, and then there's just no limit to the things that she can say because the man can't, you know, respond in any way physically. Whereas, you know, it's like, I mean, in layman's terms, if two guys were having that same kind of conversation, they would get into a fist fight. Or if the man was, you know, going ballistic, then the woman would slap him in the face or something like that. But a man cannot hit a woman back, which I don't think he should. I mean, once again, Peterson said very clearly, the answer to resolving the conflict is to negotiate for peace. That's what we all want. But, you know, it's like, it's something that's very interesting. And at the same time, though, um, I would say that Peterson's assessment of that is somewhat realist and not enough idealist. You know, you would obviously want to, um, I mean, the whole reason why people have, you know, clinical psychologists, right, is so that they can avoid situations like that. And so they can get away from those type of destructive behaviors. And the way you do that is just, as he said, negotiate for peace. So if the answer is to negotiate for peace, um, this might be one of the times when I think he is doing somewhat of a distortion to kind of get a sort of desired result from his audience. Now, when we want on that note, I mean, I'm not going to really hide it. I'm a very big fan of Jordan Peterson, but at the same time, I do believe that he slants and distorts his material 
to kind of cater to the um, mass audiences of the kind of YouTube domain, and as, as well as things like Patreon and the people that buy his books and such. He does slant his things. And, you know, once again, that comes from studying analytics, and it also comes from kind of knowing how to manipulate people in large groups. The problem with that is, is that um, it doesn't give you the most genuine academic work. It's kind of a little bit academic and a little bit appealing to certain social groups. So I don't really think that the accusations against Jordan Peterson are too harsh that he, you know, distorts things to get a desired result from the male-dominated YouTube community. But um, I think it's a little bit more mild than people are making it out to be. And, like, once again, as someone who is a fan of, of his work, and um, I've heard so many insightful things from his lectures. I took his whole Maps of Meaning course that is online for free, at least watching the lectures, you know, from the University of Toronto. And I think he has a variant of the course that was taught at Harvard when he was at Harvard. He um, he uploaded those lectures as well. He was just really ahead of his time by having all of his lectures recorded since the 90s and, um, you know, anticipating something like YouTube. And I think that it's really been given us a very large contribution to, you know, some things that we can kind of combining entertainment with some genuine insightful material but at the same time, I don't think he's immune to criticism. Like, I read through the comments, and there are just so many people that, like, that guy interviewing him, he was stupid. Well, it's like, there's a little bit more depth to everyone. I actually, you know, find kind of some depth in almost anyone who interviews him, except Kathy Newman, not her, sorry. But, like, even Helen Lewis, I found some good things about her. Like, I mean, I, I didn't think that she was an idiot, which she is not. But then when it comes to, you know some people like this guy from France, like, he was really trying to focus in on sort of the social aspects of this, which we talked about, you know, like slanting the material to get a desired result from a male-dominated audience. And that would just be something like, I believe Jordan Peterson is doing that. This interviewer believed Jordan Peterson was doing that. A lot of people think that. Um, but that's just purely an interpretation of some of the material that he has put on the internet. It's like, I'm not a mind reader, nor was this French inter interviewer. You know, it's like, I don't really know ex the, his exact thought process. And one thing I did really like in the interview, I, I mean, if I, if I didn't say it clearly enough, I did not like it, was that Peterson's like, you must have thought about which questions you were going to ask me, and you must have spent some time thinking about your questions. And it's like, of course he did. And of course he wants, you know, to expose you as, you know, a f as like a hack or a fraud or something. I mean, that would be just great. That would be a great video and great television. That's what he needs to do. I mean, like, that's not, once again, there's some truth to that, but that's not really as severe as people are making it out to be. That's just some interviewer trying to get some ratings. I mean, do people not do that? Of course they do. Does Jordan Peterson not, you know, present his material for a particular domain? Of course he does. And it's like, um, overall though, I mean, you know, it's like, it's nice to hear different perspectives about how people respond to Jordan Peterson's work. And, um, I just want to, like, um, kind of keep exploring some of his material. I really like thinking about the maps of meaning stuff, you know, about how every, everyone has a belief system. Your belief system has a zenith. No human has absolute knowledge, so you have to have faith in something. And it's like, there's some very, very uh, thoughtful things that are in maps of meaning. But, you know, it's like when you get into some parts of that book, like, the language gets a little bit mangled. And it's like a lot of the things he's saying aren't very clear. And, um... He had some illustrations in the book that were very difficult to make sense of, but um, so the illustration that I was thinking of involved the patriarchy. One area where I would push back against Jordan Peterson in his debate with the French interviewer was the concept of patriarchy, and he was just like, I think Peterson somewhat underplayed the role of men in politics and men in, you know, um, leadership positions. It's just like, Peterson was like, well, what did the feminists think, that women weren't involved before 1965? And the interviewer appropriately responded by saying that men are heavily more involved with, um, you know, politics and global leadership, leaders in the business world, CEOs, CFOs, all of those things were heavily more male-dominated in the past, and they're slowly becoming more female. Women are becoming more involved with these things. 
So I think that's something that Peterson underplayed. But what I think the um, French interviewer was underplaying was the fact that uh, men are much more heavily involved in the combat positions and the dangerous jobs. And, you know, things like hazard pay, which is, contributes to the earnings gap. I really think he was underestimating those characteristics. So this thing was, um, it was very interesting to lot watch, but I don't really know if it was the best exchange of ideas that was going on. It seemed more like, um, you know, a boxing match as opposed to a debate. But, you know, that is what it is, and it definitely gets your attention. Well, that's all for me now, and everybody, by the way, Happy New Year.